evening. A woman from East Yorkshire has spoken of her shock after receiving abusive messages online known as trolling. Georgia Bibby led a campaign against the use of overly thin mannequins in shops, but was sent vicious messages about her own appearance from other social media users. It comes as the BBC obtains figures which show that the reporting of crimes such as cyberbullying, trolling and online harassment has increased by 85% in the last two years. Leanne Brown has the story. She's here with us now. Uh, what do these figures show? Well, Peter, when trolling is reported to the police, it's recorded as malicious communication. The figures show that last year there were 1,043 cases in the Humberside Police Force area, and so far this year there have been 1,481. In Lincolnshire, 205 offences were recorded last year and 170 so far this year. So it's a problem that's on the increase. It was this tweet highlighting the thinness of mannequins in High Street Store Topshop that led to Georgia Bibby receiving abuse about her own appearance. People calling me fat. Um, there was a comedian who did like a purse directed to the fat girl in Topshop. There was more positive, but... I think it's the negatives that stick with you a bit more when you're sort of hearing people calling you fat day in, day out. Stories like this are becoming more frequent, partly driven by our increased use of social media. But who is it that's doing the trolling? Trolls come in all shapes and sizes. Um, it, they may engage in trolling because they are bored, they are depressed, they're anxious, they're jealous and so on. And there's many, many different varieties of trolling behaviour. Um, somebody may post an inflammatory comment in a forum um, or just on Twitter generally to kind of attract attention or it may be directed specifically at a particular person. Hull businesswoman and former Apprentice star Michelle Dubery has been a victim and says not enough is being done to tackle the problem. I flagged uh, users to Twitter, for example, absolutely nothing. They did nothing. They might temporarily ban someone for a number of hours. The abuser actually finds that funny and sees it as a badge of honour. But the police say they do take it seriously and there are a number of things that users can do to help themselves. The malicious communications uh, offence carries a maximum of two years imprisonment. People should think before the, the click. If you're going on social media sites, make sure that you, you've got a privacy setting on it. Don't friend people you don't know. If people are engaging in that type of language, you can delete them. Georgia says the support of her family and friends made it easier to put the experience behind her and that it won't stop her from using social media. We've all seen the headlines in the papers about trolling, but as we've just seen, it's not just celebrities and high-profile figures receiving online abuse. Ordinary people are victims as well, Peter. Yeah, and thank you very much indeed for that. Well, Dr Bex Lewis is an expert on social media. I asked her if the companies were doing enough to protect their users. Well, I think that's a big question. I definitely think they've got a lot of responsibility that they need to take for what they're using, for how they shape uh, the, the platforms that we use every day, all day, every day. Um, so there's a lot more that they can be doing. I don't think we can hold them entirely responsible for everything. Do these people who do this say cruel and horrible things because they can and because they can hide behind a keyboard? I mean, do we need to be educating young people more? Yeah, I'm a big advocate for digital literacy. I think we need to be looking at what we understand about the shape of the space we're using, what we understand about our interaction. There's this thing called disinhibition where you forget that this um, that there's a human being at the other side of the screen and you kind of and so you behave inappropriately. And a lot of my thinking is that if you're nasty offline, you'll be nasty online that's, and the screen just helps that. That's very interesting. So some people forget what they're writing and forget that they're sending it to a human being at the other end. Yes, and there's been some really effective campaigns that's been done with drink driving and that kind of thing as well, where you come face to face with the person who's been impacted by your negative behaviour. And that sometimes works for anti-bullying campaigns and anti-trolling campaigns as well. So I think we need more of that happening uh, in schools. And do the trolls themselves actually enjoy the notoriety or the publicity if they get it? Some of them do. Some of them are clearly there for... So sometimes when we're, we're engaging with trolls, you sometimes say, don't feed the trolls. Then they're just there to get a rise out of you and whatever you do to respond is not going to help. Uh, sometimes it's people who just haven't understood that 
there's that human being at the other side. And so they need educating. We need to think maybe a little bit differently about the people who are determined to be trolls. Um, and very briefly, people who are in the public eye, should they expect it or even they shouldn't expect it? Um, I don't think anyone expects or deserves anything. I think to a certain extent, if you put yourself out in the public eye, things can happen. But I think at the end of the day, we've got to remember that everyone is a human being. And one of my mantras for when you post anything online is, do you want your parents to see it? Do you want your kids to see it? Do you mind if it ends up on the front page of a newspaper? Very. Or And can your worst enemy do something with that? Yeah, that's a very good answer. Uh, very interesting to chat with you, Dr. Lewis. Thank you very much indeed. Wish you well. Thank you.